got a quorum. Uh, it's Monday, December 5th, 2022, 7.43 p.m. So I call this meeting of the Needham Design Review Board to order. I'm the chair, Mark Lusing. I would like to come from where the all members and applicants are present, can hear us. So when I call your name, please respond. Bob Dermody. Here. Deborah Robinson. Here. Okay. Also town and our town staff person, Elisa Lichman. Uh, applicants, if you'd please respond when I call your project, the uh, Sheraton Hotel, 100 Cabot Street. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 210 Highland Ave, Ideal Tile. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the Learning Tree Preschool, 225B yeah. Highland. Okay. Welcome to this open meeting of the Needham Design Review Board, which is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, with extensions due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations. For this meeting, the Needham Design Review Board is convening by Zoom app is posted on the town's website the design review board page, identifying how the public may join. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. There is a special permit application for which we will seek public input tonight. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this board are available on the town's website. Public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Please note that this main meeting is being recorded Please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer unless the chair approves. Please mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. I would like to review the remote meeting procedures for tonight's meeting. I will introduce each applicant on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will take comments or questions from DRB members. After discussion, each vote will be by a roll call vote. <clears throat> the building department requires electronic submission of building permit applications. A copy of your application stamped and noted for the type of approval you receive will be emailed to you by the DRB support staff. That can then be attached to your building permit application. So we'll now start with the first item on the agenda. This is a public notice is hereby given that Sheraton Hotel, 100 Cabot Street has made application to the Design Review Board for a special permit pursuant to the signed bylaw sections 5.5.3.1a installing more than one freestanding sign and one additional wall sign and any other applicable sections of the bylaw. So uh, Sheraton Hotel, why don't you take it away? Uh, we're proposing the installation of two, two foot high by three foot wide post and panel directional signs and one three by three wall sign over the garage to entrance. The proposed signs are not covered by your existing special permit. So we are seeking to add these to the necessary directional signs to direct traffic in a simpler fashion. Okay, um, do the board members are able to look at this or do we need him to uh, screen share and can we look at it on your own package? Uh, you're muted, Deborah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I can see it. Um, okay. okay. From, well, from the review, these are are these replacing the existing locations where these exist are already? Yes, because they're rebranding. Yes. Yeah. Um, so overall, I see the, the issue that dragged you beyond uh, an as of right directional signage is just the size of the signs and the height. Um, I think I am familiar with these from being the days when you could go to the Sheraton, which you can do again. Um, I just, does anyone have any questions or comments about these three signs? No. And your building signs were reviewed previously, so. Uh, Good, correct, yeah. Deborah, any questions or comments? Um, 
so the only comment I have, I guess on the first one, I'm looking at it, the one that says um, exit and parking garage, which it's just kind of small, the one that it's replacing that says exit and parking garage. I just, when I look at this, it says exit and parking, and then it says garage. So like <laughs> the words parking gar and garage belong together. So I would put exit on one, exit and, and then like parking garage together. I mean, that's just my pet peeve maybe, but um, other than that, I don't have any comment. Uh, yeah, I didn't really read it that way, but uh, I didn't see how you might. I'm not sure parking garage would fit on a line. <laughs> Bob, do you have a, any? Yeah, that's a good pickup, uh, Deborah. Um, I think it would fit if you look at the space. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's an acceptable comment and suggestion to change if the uh, applicant's okay with it. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a problem at all. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and the signs look better than the ones that are there. I will add that. Yeah, it's, and they're more consistent, which is nice. Yeah, I think that's their goal. So, um, yeah, guest parking is all on one line, and then the one on the garage is that's pretty clear. So, yeah, I would suggest we just make that one suggestion. Okay. All right. So I would accept a motion that we approve these three signs, a special permit for these three signs with the condition on the sign E08 that uh, parking be moved from the first line to the second line and it says exit and and the second line is parking garage. So moved. Second. Uh, All right, we've come to the vote. Uh, Bob Germany. Yes. Deborah Robinson. Yes. And the chair approves. All right, thank you. Thank uh, you. You know what? Are, is there anyone from the public that has any comments on this? I was a little premature on the vote. No comments, okay. At least I asked, look. Lisa gave myself a note. <laughs> and it still didn't work. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm writing the note that right. the conditions right underneath that comment. I'm like, you dummy. Well, uh, we should all help you out anyways. We're a team. All right. Well, thanks for uh, attending. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, next item on the agenda is 210 Highland Ave, Ideal Tile. Uh, we originally got a package early last week. I mean, Thursday, I believe. And I did ask Elisa to contact the applicant and get a, a little bit of an additional information or some sort of imagery because I couldn't tell where on the building the sign was being proposed. So I will turn it over to, I'm sorry, what is this? No yeah, yeah, we, we sent uh, additional pictures uh, this morning. And I hope uh, she got it because she said uh, all set much better looking uh, pictures. And then uh, uh, we are we are proposing uh, 84 by 151 inch uh, um, channel ladders and then panel sign with the backlit lighting, <clears throat> LED lighting, and then the, uh, installing on the uh, side of the in front of the building at the corner you can see on the pictures. We're gonna use uh, all uh, outdoor LEDs and then the <clears throat> proper installation uh, as as we try to explain on the, our uh, propose. Is any question I can try to answer? Huh. I'm just doing a quick calculation of potential square footage here. Uh, do you know the width of the lettering in ideal, the word ideal, not the line? You've got dimension lines to the uh, black line separating the two. Do you have the, do you know the size of the, the width of the word ideal? I can open the one second. 
72 inches. 70? 72. 72. Okay. Um, well, the way yeah, the way we measure signs is uh, top to bottom on the longest part and side to side on the widest part, and that's the square footage. Um, I guess I'd be curious if the board considers the lion element a more of an architectural graphic element, or if you think it's an integral part of the sign uh, because if it's if we consider it part of the sign this is a 75 square foot sign and it's too big without a special permit i mean i would consider the logo always sort of part of the sign it's not as if it's a separate piece of artwork okay all right so unfortunately Mama, it's the scale of this is larger than the bylaw allows at that location. So uh, you have what to apply it? for a special what, what, what is the uh, square foot we can max? 30, 32. 32? Just logo or whole thing? The whole thing. We, they, it all counts as one thing. You draw a box around the, the perimeter of the various elements. That's how it's measured. Uh, 32 is uh, less than half the... Right, so you can apply for a special permit, um, and I would uh, let the board discuss this with uh, you now and give you some, give you our thoughts on it, and then you can make adjustments sure. into the sign and come. You'll have to come back. So, sure. So I'm, I'm looking at the large, I'm just having a hard time. We just uh, sort of scrolling in and out on this. Right. But the is the intent that the 210 yes. stays where it is, or does that go somewhere yes, else? Then it's uh, existing one, existing number, yeah. All right. Uh, I do have a message that uh, I was looking through. The He did review this with the building inspector, and he believes that this location is visible from 128, so he he the size is uh, allowed as is. So uh, it can be the square footage is not too big. Uh, I misunderstood the orientation, uh, but the billing inspector has already looked at this. So uh, one, I will I will take back what I said about being too big, and we will All proceed. Right. So I, uh, Deborah, why don't you go ahead? I'm sorry, you were already started. Okay, so I'm trying to scroll in on the image down below that shows the existing context, which is, I guess, what I'm having a hard time getting to. So there's a, a sign there currently. What's that? Is that there's correct? Sign, uh... You know, 210 is number over there, uh, not a part of sign. But the existing sign that's there, you're going to remove that? Yes. And those that's are banner, pen banner, so, uh, that temporary banner. We will remove that and then put the, this uh, new one when you get a permit. When I'm looking at the, the and I'm just finally just zooming in enough on it, the building looks very dirty for one thing. And then you have this existing, if that's pin letter signs, I guess my issue, the thing that, you know, a lot of times looks really bad. You, You're seeing existing picture now that uh, they renovate everything and then now it's beautiful. Am I the only one who can't hear him? Uh, that's uh, what you've seen on, uh, online the picture possibly uh, was existing uh, building picture. Now is that they renovate all buildings and then now it's brand new. They've cleaned it, Deborah. Okay, all right, because it's like the shadow of the old stuff and the dirt that is right. just 
bothers me more than any of the the signage. So wait, so let me zoom back out again. So um, I mean, to me, it seems like the 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 text is kind of low on the building. Wait a second. We can we, we can raise a little bit, but uh, we concerned about the touching close by the number. You know, maybe we can uh, uh, space it uh, between the line and then the uh, uh, letter. We can do like a, another feet upper. But at least over there, uh, seven eight foot uh, from the ground. Would you want to just compress the? whole thing to ever move you know keep the spacing between the line and ideal and lion yeah, and the it's line it's and see, just please that. make the whole thing 140 inches so that that just all got a little more compressed and then the name yeah. of the business would be higher so we can do that yeah i'm just i'm talking with deborah first so yeah no i, I just i'm sorry i just i really couldn't under, hear what he was saying it was just, just totally muffled but um I mean, I, do you know what I'm saying? That I just think when I look at, even if you make it all a little bit smaller, it just seems to me that the ideal tile, the name is just really far down on the building. Yeah, I guess I don't, I'm, I guess I feel like it's their choice at this point. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, it might be a little stronger if it was on top, but I, I mean, I don't understand the whole idea of tying the lion in anyway so i mean it's just a, it's a at this point a graphic choice that particular location this probably works better than it would on other buildings because there's no competition it's the only sign on that building next to that big parking lot across the street from that gas station so <clears throat> i think it's i think the whole thing is fairly visible there's no planting i mean uh, you can see the signs illustrated onto the new renovated facade which is different from that brick that dirty brick facade that's in the existing conditions photo uh is this the only tenant in the building yeah that's on the building sir okay yeah because there's a 210 on the side of the building facing highland ave and there's also a 210 on the side facing the parking lot on the west side um with a blank wall under it so they originally proposed a sign for that side and the building inspectors said it would not be allowed all right fine um and is the name of the company leon ideal tile yes okay yeah i find the graphic a, a little confusing but that's my problem <laughs> um I, I could live with it being a, a little compressed but if it meets the regs um you know i guess i'm okay with it. i also echo deborah's comment i understand the 210 is already attached to the building but it might look better if it was all aligned um i don't know I, if they're not going to move it i guess i could live with it okay so i guess i'm saying yeah i guess it's okay <laughs> all right uh, well, I, I think Deborah has a nice point. It's just kind of spread out there. And again, it's a pretty singular visible element. There's not, again, there's not competition, but I think I'd just like to compress that whole bottom section of lettering so that the line's a little closer to Leon and ideal tiles moved up. So I would say, let's make the overall, um, those are, do you think those are eight inch coursings on that masonry? Let's just say that the overall sign is a 140 inches instead of in in height, so that they compress that. Up. Okay. You can adjust it. All right. So I would take a motion to approve the sign with the condition that they compress the lettering section together slightly, so that the overall height of the sign is 140 inches. So move. 
I'll second. Okay, now come to the vote. Bob Dermody? Yes. Deborah Robinson? Yes. And the chair says yes. All right, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a good night, all. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda was a blast from the past. Uh, Jim did a sign company, the Learning Tree Preschool, 225B Highland Avenue, so which is uh, just down the street from this, actually, from the Ideal Tile Project. So welcome, Mr. Tanner. You're still muted, Steve. Uh, good to see you all. Hi, Steve. Are, are we going to ask him lots of technical questions? Yeah. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> hey, I learned them all from you, Steve. <laughs> Not really, but whatever. You guys do a good job yourself. <laughs> good to see you. I've been doing this since 1980. I'm done. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. to see you here if you're done. Yeah. You're just helping somebody out? Yeah, an old friend of mine who is in Florida where I should be right now. Yeah. Uh, this is right across the street, is it not? Yeah. That's, right. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Kitty corner from the yeah. uh, tile. All right, can you tell us what we're going on here? Okay, Steve? this this building here was requested by the landlord that the letters be mounted on rails because his building is starting to look like Swiss cheese from all the other people that have put up signs and then left. And what these are uh, uh, raised ladders, half inch thick, uh, overall height from top of the T to bottom of the G is 24 inches and spreads in 16 feet. Um, they're painted these colors. Okay. Pretty close. I mean, I don't know what the PMS numbers are or anything, but the idea is that it's attractive to children. Okay. Uh, and the rails will be it says it's a, the painted as a with the wall. Yes. And, okay. Um, where exactly is this tenant located? On well, the on the bottom, it shows their storefront is 35 feet long. It goes oh. from okay. the left of the building to the, almost to the door of the next space. Okay, I see that now. Thanks. All right. All right, uh, Deborah, do you have uh, questions or comments? So what happens to all the dirty residue from the old signs behind it? Is that as part of this? I, I don't really know. That's up to the landlord to take care of that. You know, we can't refinish this building. Is it a paint issue or is it? I don't know what it is. That, that, that's uh, ethos or something like that. Yeah. No, I, was, yeah, I remember that from when I did the building. I'm just looking at what looks like a faded section that had a sign on it. Well, there are two of them. One is. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The, the new graphic covers the other one. We could ask him to uh, make we it. Can, a we can add, request the landlord. Can we require that as part of the approval that that. You know, yeah, we can we really stretch, but we can yeah. We've, well, well, that that would be requiring the landlord to do something, not yeah. not the not the tenant. I understand it would look definitely look better, but I don't know if it's a tenant responsibility. No, but he can go to his landlord and say, "My tenancy depends on you doing this." Well. You can write it up that way and he can present it to the tenant. Okay, to the landlord. Because that's pretty pretty messy looking. I agree with you, but you know what I mean? Uh, we know, we, you know, we did this <clears throat> when that dentist went in on the, I call it the chromosonic building next to Middlesex Bank. Um, yeah. That landlord yeah. attended and we did speak with him directly, but uh, it's not unheard of us to ask for the wall to be patched and repaired behind the old sign. That's perfectly fine. So, uh, Steve, do they use both of those doors in their storefront? Do you know? Uh, I really don't know. And is it centered in that 35 foot span? Well, I haven't figured that out yet. It doesn't really look centered. I didn't really make that drawing. 
Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, like, you know, the questions I was asking about where they go in right, and right. Yeah, the, the, the normal stuff. I'm just curious how. Yeah, if, I think it should be centered over those two doors. That's just my opinion. If they own that, if they lease that whole space, that would seem even if they use one or the other, I think it makes sense. Yeah, right. that's, that's a good point. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell from this if that awning is centered on the doors. The um, awning is not centered on on the doors. There's a gap in the awning too. Uh, I'm looking on Google Maps. And, a, uh, yeah, it reflects the pilaster. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion on those awnings when they proposed them. Yeah, whether they should continue, whether they break them. Um, I think if it's centered over the doors, uh, it does kind of float over the awnings, but the awnings are sort of repetitious as they go around the building in the second floor. So, you know, I think, it, you know, as I look at it, I'm just saying, what does it, what are we trying for it to relate to? And I think Bob's right, the doors are really where they need to relate to. Right. I think it defines the entrance better. Yeah, I think the, even though I have to back, but it you know visually as you drive by. Yeah, I think the sign's long enough to cover that. It'll go over that gap in the awning, and it'll still work. Absolutely, yeah. it, it goes so far over that it's it's not like it almost meant to be there. I mean, it's just obviously we're stretching out over this whole piece. Yeah, Steve, how do you feel about putting it on rails? It's it was the landlord's request. Is, but if, if if you're a sign expert, what would your recommendation be? If uh, put them up individually. Right. Okay. But I'm looking at that where it was it you break, I fix whatever that yeah. place was. Well, that they broke <laughs> they broke the, the facade. I think. Yeah. That, that end looks pretty tough. You're right. The one over the left end doesn't seem as bad. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's our duty to make some comment. I don't know what weight it'll carry, but yeah, I mean, we should improve. Yeah, I think you should too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think we'll make a request that they patch and repaint Yeah, uh, the previous sign areas so that the, the facade is one color. Yeah. Um, anybody have any other issues with the sign itself? Like it looks kind of an interesting preschool sign, actually. I mean, it's a, it's a nice font and it's nice that you know the combination of colors but I just I think there isn't enough contrast between the the letters and the the rails I think it's going to be hard to read no the rails are going to be the color of the building yeah those rails will disappear so you see it's really going to be lighter than what we're seeing in the right the sketch yes mm. no it's fun okay so we'll just center it over the door. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do a motion, doors. Steve. So I would uh, suggest uh, over the pilaster between the two doors. Interesting. Or, or, or just say center over the doors, plural. Yeah. Okay. So I would take a motion to approve this with the conditions that the sign is centered over the two doors, and that the. <clears throat> Building owner patch and paint uh, the wall damage so that the facade is one uniform color. Which is not to say that a patch will make it one uniform color. Sometimes you know it's it's still going to look like a patch unless they <laughs> or almost would almost paint the whole thing. But presumably a patch is better there. than what's there. Right. They they can get they can paint each square fully. Uh, to the rest color of the rest of the building. I mean, that's actually either it's faded and they'll have to adjust the color, or it's just a you know funny photograph. But I mean, it's obvious that it's been it's different. So it's a good a good time to clean it up. <clears throat> Preschools seem to tend to be pretty stable tenants as far as it's been our experience. Yeah, so it's, it should be worth it to the to have that done. So we'll be the bully pulpit and suggest that they patch and paint the walls also. Thank you. Uh, can I get them approve that motion? Someone move that? So move. Second. Uh, vote. Bob Dermody? Yes. Deborah Robinson? Yes. And chairs, yes.
Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, Steve. Good, night. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yep. Okay, and then we have the minutes of November 7th. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, yeah. Well written as usual. Thank you. Yeah, Kristen has a little different style, so but it's working nicely. <laughs> yep. Uh, we, she's actually going back and doing a couple that Rana was unable to get to. So we'll have those for the next meeting. I just haven't had a chance to read them yet. All right, so I would take a motion to approve the minutes of November 7th, 2022. So moved. Second. <clears throat> then we come to the vote. Bob Dermody? Yes. Deborah Robinson? Yes. And the chair is yes. Okay. Um, our next meeting is the 19th. I thought we might have a new member. We interviewed three people on Friday with the planning board. Uh, they had three applicants. Uh, the one, there was an architect. Are we still, uh, are we still recording? Should we record this? Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, and so there was the first applicant. The applicant that uh, we agreed to offer the appointment to uh, today decided not to do it. There's uh, an architect that does interior architecture and residential work. So uh, I, will, I will be speaking with them, but I assume that <clears throat> we had a second strong candidate who was a graphic designer uh, and had a lot of art experience and, and other sort of really a little bit of construction experience. So oh, good. Uh, we'll see what he says. Um, there was a discussion of conflict of interest and she, uh, Natasha, one of the planning board members told her she really shouldn't do work in Needham. And so she, I think she was worried about that long-term that she might be doing projects that we would look at and would not wanna to have to turn them down. So we keep searching. Obviously we need another person because I had to drag Bob out of his sick bed. <laughs> It doesn't look sick. Yeah. It's a... I hide I'll, it well. I'll, I'll, I'll drop a Guinness off after the meeting, Bob. <laughs> so, so I would uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, and, we, and we vote. Bob Dermody? Uh, yes. Deborah Robinson? Yes. And the chair is yes. All right. Thank really, you. Bob, you saved us. Thank you so no much. No worries. See ya. All right. Good night, Deborah. Good night.